Oh, hi, it's Zach Peter, your new favorite pop culture guru, serving you the hottest tea three times a week. From the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, unfiltered convos with your favorite stars, and of course, the latest from Vanderpump Land, I've got you covered. And new episodes of the podcast are now available in video on Spotify. And they don't just let anybody do video, but this platinum blonde has won them over. So if you want the latest news from the ultimate tea spilling professional, tune in to No Filter with Zach Peter. That's No Filter with Zach Peter on your favorite podcast app now. What's that place you've always wanted to try? Well, you're there sharing plates with just one bite. Or on second thought, maybe not sharing. It's that good. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. Hi, my name is Carlos Cotchin, <laughs> and you're listening to Storyworthy. Welcome to the Storyworthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannah Spinney. Welcome to Storyworthy. I am Christine Blackburn, and I'm here with Hannah Spinney, and we're coming to you from Paradise Landing Bar and Restaurant in Balsam Lake, Wisconsin. Tell me that is on a body of water, for Christ's sakes. Uh, no, it's actually a lake built of balsa wood. <laughs> uh, it's a new thing that we're really trying to create. No, it's a beautiful place in, uh, called Paradise Landing. And uh, it's it's on a lake, and uh, you know they don't mention how many mosquitoes are going to eat you on the way in and out right. of the restaurant. But we just leave that part aside. So this is paradise, really, to you, isn't it, Hannes? Well, it would be to a certain extent, but uh, yeah, we're saying that because our topic tonight is is paradise. That's exactly right. We have a storyteller here. He's also an author, and his name is Carlos Kotkin. He is here. He brings the topic paradise right and we don't know what his definition is going to be we were saying beforehand what's our definition going well, to be we've of? got a lot of definitions of paradise of course but before we talk about that i did want to say to our listeners the mm -hmm. story worthy listeners you know we do have listeners on they us. are our number one definition of paradise is the fact that we know that there are millions upon millions of thousands of people listening to our our podcast i would not go that far but i will say for the thousands of people that that do listen to the show i personally very much appreciate it and here's how you guys out there can support the show tell us well you can go over to story you can go over to storyworthypodcast.com and just click on our amazon ad and then shop as normal that's all right. you have to do you can go and you can buy uh things to do in wisconsin in the summer beer drinking in wisconsin and uh, just remember guys you can also uh, help us and find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Stitcher. And if you want to donate money, that's right, cash money, <laughs> uh, you can go to uh, uh, storyworthypodcast.com and click on Donate. And if you can't support in a monetary way, just go to iTunes and leave us a good review. That helps us out. So look at all these things they can do for us, Hannes. It's really what you do for anybody anymore, don't you? Right. If you like somebody, you like their page on Facebook. If you like them, you follow them on Twitter. If You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, exactly. redundant, right. but we're special. We're doing so much for you people. That's look at us. Point. We're sitting here just lathering out the bullshit, and <laughs> you are not writing reviews. You're not giving us money. Come on. Come on. Hey, listen, actually, Hannes, you know me. I really, really am appreciative to the people that do listen. You know that. Oh, I know. No, we are. And we and the people write reviews. Seriously, that's great. And if you can send us a couple of shekels, that's awesome. But you're really the Amazon thing. You know you're going to go and you're going to buy a used copy of Stranger in a Strange Land because your son's got to read it for a college exam, right? <laughs> so go ahead and spend $3 and that'll help us out. All right, Paradise. Let's talk about Paradise. I have lived in some beautiful places, Hannes. I have lived in some very beautiful places. Pittsburgh, Gibsonia, uh, <laughs> Those weren't Burbank. Those the first ones to come to mind. No. My first one to come to mind is I lived in the South Pacific on an island. Um, uh, yes. On an island with 67 people. And it was very beautiful. And I have some pictures, you know, from the air yeah, of this see, island. Yeah, that is the definition. Some people like 
paradise would be, you know, tropic, uh, a tropic blue, island. To me, water. it sounds like a fucking nightmare. Really? Nothing about that story. You know, it's like I have no interest in living on a living on a tropical island a million miles from okay. civilization. But when you say the word paradise, in other words, if you were to see a poster and it would be like paradise, yes, and then this where would, would be that in a be travel agency? Okay, so uh, what to me, would... oh, where would it be for me if I could if I could define it? It would probably be well, actually, it'd be a really nice house in Pasadena. But I would also have a house in Malibu that I could go to. Oh, if I, I wanted see. To. That, so you have two or, paradise spots. Well, I'm just saying Los Angeles is actually a lot closer to paradise people think. It's not very paradisey when you're in your car on the 405 and uh, uh, there's like an overturned truck in front of you right. in flames. But uh, when you're just, you know, sitting around going, you know what? It's three degrees in Wisconsin right now. I'm feeling pretty good out here yeah, in my no, backyard. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying because I, I play tennis with these guys that are all like very wealthy, retired doctors and economists, and these yeah. really had very accomplished careers, and now they're all retired. And you know where they want to live? They want to live a half mile from the tennis court right here in Los Angeles. Yeah, they and technically I'm, would like to live under the tennis court if they could build like like basement no, but my studio point is apartments. Like, this is it's a good life. It's a good life to yeah, retire in good weather and play tennis. That's my point. Yeah, and but somewhere urban. You but know, let me like, talk about paradise uh, again in terms of Tonga. Yes, uh, yes. Where I was in the Peace Corps, Tonga, the Kingdom of Kong, Tonga. It's so beautiful, and it is the white beaches and blue water, and they have, you know, it is so pristine and it is so untouched. There's like 170 islands in the country, but only like 60 are even inhabited. So there's all these uninhabited islands that look terrific. But well, you, I guess, already know, huh? I just, I, I just nothing about. Like I say, this just sounds like camping gone horribly well, wrong. I don't even like camping in the civilization. The, the, the island I lived on, you know, there was no electricity, no running water. Ugh. There were no cars, or Ugh. you know, there was no like paths or anything. There's no bicycles. There's no pavement. You know what I mean? But and if you wanted a drink of water, well, you go over to the rain tank and you pour <laughs> the water from the bottom of the rain tank, and then you pick out the mosquito larva. Sure. But there's no ice and there's no Coca-Cola and there's no candy bars and there's nothing naturally. I think you're really leaving out for me. The there's no chocolate. One. There's no television, is there? There's no television. Oh, fuck me. Okay, here's now, another wait, me, extreme. Can I just stay, tell you what? how important television is to me? How I, important is television to you? Years ago, uh, me and my then girlfriend were going to go up to uh, a Big Sur, right? Beautiful, beautiful Big Sur place called Deachin's Inn. It's like something that somebody built in like 1920. All the cabins are different. They don't have locks on them. So it's like, okay, it'll be wacky. It'll be in the woods. We get there. I'm like, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I get there. No television. I'm like, I'm going to set fire to this whole fucking forest. <laughs> are you kidding it's like, me? Are you kidding me? I have to go through. And we were there for like one night. I was like, you want me to go 24 hours without television? This is, uh, what do you I'm mean? addicted. Serious, uh, but what are you watching on TV that's so important? Like anything I would want to see on TV, I could see on demand on the computer. Like any. Well, that's cheating. I'm telling. This is 20 years ago. I'm not oh, talking about. I see. Yeah, if I if I had you know a Wi-Fi iPad, I think I probably would. Uh, oh, I see. This was your only connection to anything. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I I need to uh, I I needed to be watching Friends. Or Seinfeld or something. I don't know what the fuck I had to watch. Anyhow, go on, go on with your well, next thing. I was just going to say, that's my own the, other, the other extreme of um, paradise is I used to live in Colorado in the mountains uh, in Winter Park. And that's like 9,000 9, feet or 9,500 feet. And it's completely beautiful and it's wonderful. But if you need underwear, well, you got to drive to Denver. You know what I mean? <laughs> there are no underwear in the town. There are no jeans. There are touristy t-shirts. But, like, you can't shop. They literally nobody, like, the, the town... Rite Aid or Walgreens doesn't say, you know what, I'm going to corner the underpants they market. Had, they had a drugstore called the Ben Franklin, and it was nice. behind the 7-Eleven, and they sold, like, Fruit of the Loom in a three-pack. But if you wanted, like, lingerie or anything, oh. you're going to Denver. There's no Victoria's <laughs> Secret. There's no Gap. Yes, you're in the mountains. Yes, it's beautiful. But for Christ's sakes, if you want sushi, you're driving down a pass. Yeah, you know what? That that actually should be uh, uh, Denver's new slogan. If you want lingerie, you're going to Denver. <laughs> Because when I think of Denver, I don't think of like fat people in thick clothing in the winter. I think of hot chicks. You make me laugh. Buying lingerie and Mervyn's. Wait, that's out of business. All right, you guys. Well, we have a storyteller here tonight. His name is Carlos Kotkin. He's been on the show before. Do you know that, Hannes? I do know. He has been on the show. He is also an author. He's toured. I saw on Facebook he was in New York. He was signing books for people. So we know he's going to be entertaining. So maybe we should just get right to it. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, stay where you are, in the car, walking around, whatever you're doing, because Carlos Kotkin is on his way here. Next, 
week on Storyworthy, we have Lee Keckner. When I approached my husband, I noticed his mouth pulled down and I thought he'd had a stroke. Next week on Storyworthy. back we're still at the paradise landing we've actually gone out on the patio now it's evening and we are uh we're looking out over the lake and it's it's beautiful it's bucolic we've got lining kugels in our hand lining kugels are beers for those of you i'm outside holding Wisconsin. one Hannes. not you people out people somewhere in the west of the united states are like what's a lining kugel it's like why don't you shut up and drink your coors light bullshit westerners ladies and gentlemen <laughs> i hate coors light Honest. so angry about it <laughs> Oh, you make me laugh. All right, you guys. Carlo Cocken, he's here. And you know, this guy, Hannes, he regularly performs at the Comedy Central stage show Sit and Spin. Have you been to Sit and Spin, Hannes? I've been to Sit and Spin. I look forward to the day that I can I can sit and spin. I would love to perform there. It's a, it's an awesome show. It's always, I've been there two or three times, I think. Always yeah, quality. Always yeah, quality. It, is always, it always is a quality show. They have a musician. I enjoy that. Uh, all right, you guys. He is also a 10-time Moth Story Slam winner. What the heck is that? That is uh, balls. That's what that is. Ten-time Moth Pure Story Slam balls. winner. It's a man with stories is what he is. He's also uh, won two Moth Grand Slams, and that's very hard to do. Uh, his humorous memoir of romantic misadventures, Please God, Let It Be Herpes, A Heartfelt Quest for Love and Companionship, <laughs> was recently published by Penguin Books. This is a very humorous book, Hannes. Uh, yeah, you can and find Penguin him, Books, you guys. that's the real thing. That's Penguin... not self-publishing. That is no, actual publishing. Hannes, he doesn't have a blog. Yeah. He has a book. He's not on the interweb like an asshole, like well, some people. He is actually us. on the interweb. <laughs> and you can find him at carloscotkin.com. High five, everybody. High five. Wherever you are, put your hands together for Carlos Kotkin. Okay, thank you guys very much. Christine, you're going to like this story and relate to it. Honest, you can take a nap because this story about paradise is about a tropical beach paradise. Bora Bora, not Tonga, which is considered one of the most beautiful destinations on earth, one of the most romantic. It's a honeymooner's paradise, and people go there to enjoy the, the you know, the turquoise waters and the pristine beaches, and, you know, they have bungalows that they can sleep over the water and, and drink fine wine and, and eat uh, fresh, freshly caught fish, which is delicious. And I had the, uh, the honor and privilege, I suppose, of going to Bora when I was 23 with my parents. I went with my parents. Uh, I was not expecting to do that, but it was their 25th wedding anniversary. And they called me and they said, we're going to go to Bora Bora to celebrate our anniversary. And we want you to come with us. And at first I said, no, I don't think I'm going to, I don't want to do that. And they said, no, no, it'll be more fun if you come with us. And they kept asking me to go and they said, we'll pay for your ticket and we'll pay for your hotel free trip to Bora Bora. So I thought, okay, I, I will, I will go. But I was thinking, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to approach it as a romantic location scout is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to find all the best beaches and the most romantic uh, dining spots. And I'm just going to scout it out for my future wife. And then I will go back someday and I will impress her. And she will think, oh, my God, you know this place so well. You're, 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 so, you're such a gift to me. I, I love you so much. And so that's, why, that's why I, how I decided I would approach this trip with my parents on their anniversary so we get on the plane and um <clears throat> well first of all the flight over there had come over for somewhere in europe and the, most of the people had already been on the airplane for several hours and it smelled like it it smelled like it reminded me it took me back to junior high to the locker rooms in junior high when people's armpits are just starting to to reek that's what it was like for about seven hours it was like being in a junior high locker room and we finally got out. We finally made it to Bora Bora. And it was just as, as beautiful as I had imagined and, and read about. And we get to the hotel room. And it, and it turns out that uh, I was going to be, my parents were going to be my roommates, which I didn't quite expect. But <laughs> that's fine. I just figured, all right, so cool. Nobody's getting action on this trip, I hope. Uh, so, and then we go to the beach. And it turns out that most of the women there are topless and beautiful uh, and it's really, really difficult to check somebody out with your mom and dad. I, I tried my best, but um, 
it's it's it was a challenge and and because there was the three of us as opposed to everybody else there who was on their honeymoon and you know making passionate love every night for us it was a an adventure and i remember uh, one of the first mornings that we were there my dad woke me up it reminded me of uh, for some reason it reminded me of the movie witness with Harrison Ford with the Amish, where the Amish guy wakes up Harrison Ford at 4.30 in the morning. He just shakes him violently and says, it's 4.30, time for milking. That's what happened with me, except it was my dad. And he said, it's 4.30, time for shark feeding. And we got up just as the sun is coming up. And we go to the hotel lobby, and there's a whole big, huge group of people. And we're all apparently going to go shark feeding. And so we get in this small boat and we head out to the reef that's surrounding uh, the island of Bora Bora. And we have a couple of guides. And one of the guides has a bucket of bloody chum. It's just filled with blood and pieces of fish. And he just throws it out into the water. And, uh, and then he says, okay, everybody jump in, dive in. And I, I thought he was kidding, but all of a sudden everybody dives in, every, including my mom and dad. And I'm the last one on the boat. <laughs> And I'm thinking every, what the, and, but I, you know, peer pressure. So I, I jumped into the water too, and we're swimming with this chum and I'm, I'm looking around and I don't see any sharks, uh, which I'm happy about, but about 20 seconds later, there was more sharks than people. I don't know where they came from. They were like beamed in and they were all around us. And the guide said he had put a, a red rope, uh, in the coral bed. And he said, humans stay on this side and sharks will stay on the other side. And everything will be cool. But the sharks didn't know this rule. So they were coming to our side. Um, and when you're swimming uh, in the water that's crystal clear and you see sharks the size of you or a little bigger swimming all around you, you don't think this is paradise. You, that's not the thought that comes to you. And somehow we survived that and uh, we got back on the boat and, and went back uh, back to our room. And we did more adventures. We went to a... a a freshwater uh, stream and we fed sacred eels that were also about the size of me and thicker than me. And I remember going into that water uh, barefooted and the guide grabbed my wrist. As soon as I went in, he said, don't move the toes because otherwise they would get eaten off. And so I, I did not move the toes and I, and I still have them. We didn't do, uh, we didn't always do death defying <laughs> things on this trip. We also, we went to a very romantic uh, restaurant called Bloody Mary's, which <laughs> You have to go. Anybody that goes to Bora Bora has to eat at Bloody Mary's. And I remember the seats uh, were, were palm tree stumps, and they were very uncomfortable. After about a minute, you, you, your ass was begging for mercy to please stand. And, and instead of the dinner, you wanted uh, Preparation H. And I remember our, our, our waitress was very cute, and she thought I was cute, but in a way like, oh, that's so cute. You're with your parents, not like I want to take a shower with you. And as we were talking to this waitress my mom uh put her finger in my ear to groom me to take the wax out oh, no. and, I just, and i remember thinking my mom is such a cock blocker this is like the only opportunity and the finger in the ear and just, um, whatever so we had a good time i got to i got to spend quality time with my parents and that was fine i got to see bora bora i got to scout it and i thought when i come back I'll know what to do. So my next big trip was three years later. I went to Australia <laughs> and I decided to go with my college roommate, Ben, and we didn't want to fly all the way to Australia for 15 million hours. So we thought we'll stop halfway. Where's halfway? Bora Bora. <laughs> so my second trip to Bora Bora was with Ben and we did the same exact things. And we went to <laughs> Bloody Mary's and we had a very romantic uh, dinner. And I remember telling him in our hotel, I said, you know, this, this is a good restaurant, but the seats are really uncomfortable. So let's take our uh, our hotel, the seat cushions that are in our hotel room. So we'll use them to sit on for comfort. So we walked in with these giant cushions and put them on the thing. And our waitress came up. It was a different waitress, but she was still very cute. And I remember she saw it and she's laughing. And, and I, I said to her, no, we're, we're just wanna, we're doing this for comfort. And she said, no, no, we, we, yes. You, you take rest from too much loving. <laughs> so, we, we, and, and. so that, that did not work out either but uh we still had a good time we left and i thought all right the third time i'm coming with a beautiful woman and uh, i got married six months ago uh, to a beautiful woman and we went on our honeymoon we went to paris thank you oh, oh it's fantastic you know what paris is a better place to honeymoon yeah let me just say that to me you know i'm sure people were listening to my cynical rant about not liking paradise for everything you said makes me feel stronger about how much I want to go to, well, someplace like Paris, New York, 
any place but some backwards thing like that. You don't think sacred eels are, are not romantic? I, I don't. I like how you got you got cock blocked twice um, from the cute waitresses. First was your finger, your mother putting her finger in your ear, yeah. and the second one was the waitress assuming that the other guy was putting his finger in your ass. And that's why <laughs> oh. you were so sore you couldn't sit on the... Uh, how did you convince I that didn't... guy, Ben, to go to Bora Bora? Uh, you, gotta, you gotta know Ben. <laughs> No, but I mean, Australia is like a backpacker's paradise. You know, yeah, you we had a great on. time. Actually, I got a lot of action. So you weren't in Australia. Australia with him that long. You we were, were there just for a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. So you went yeah. to Australia. Did you do like the Oz experience? Or I did. We bus? went on a Contiki tour. Okay, so how was that? a bus that? full of hot single women. And right. That's Hookup Central. So how, which I don't uh, normally talk that way, but that's what it is. It's Hookup Central. No, I backpacked through Australia for a month, and I know exactly what that is. The, the yeah. Oz experience is what we did. Yeah. And it's one of those hop on, hop off. And yeah. then you meet people, especially from, from like, all over the world. Oh, yeah. Germany and Denmark and yeah. England. Because those guys are on holiday for like a month and a half. I made two, up two for months. it. Yeah, I made up for it in Australia. And so, <laughs> I don't want to brag. How about Ben? But, uh, How did Ben do in Australia? Uh, I'll let Ben speak for himself. He's about not, the women. He's down not under. here, but uh, yeah, yeah. And so he on the way still back, exhausted. He, thought, he can't get out of yes, bed. It's years yes. ago. You he thought, still can't we'll, walk. We'll just stop in Bora Bora. That's what you thought. Yeah, rest our feet. What's the name of the city that you fly into in Bora Bora? Well, you, uh, I don't know. The, the, the first airport. you fly into Tahiti, and that city is Papaite. Yeah, and so I'm you, looking at and the, then you the fly Wikipedia page. to Bora Bora, right. and there's a little village, and the name ex- escapes me. It's got a V in it. And there's not like a terminal or anything. Uh, uh, there's just tape. Little... Yes, Vi- yes Vi- there it is. Oh, no yeah. kidding! It's the just major... like a little landing strip. And yeah, they have of... a little town. They have a couple of shops. The permanent uh, population of Bora Bora is eight thousand eight hundred people. Yeah. Oh, how about that? It's more that crowded not... than you would expect. So here's something I know about you, Carlos Cockin. Yeah. You are an only child. Yes, I am. And it's just interesting to me because you don't seem like a spoiled only child who always got everything he wanted. You seem like a kid who's had a lot of really interesting experiences. Like you have so many stories. It doesn't seem like the life of a regular only child who's spoiled. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I'm very spoiled. You are. Yeah. You are well, his spoiled. parents did. Well, yeah, but they're spoiling and there's like, they took we me to will Bora take Bora. our... Yeah, they took him to Bora Bora, <laughs> which is spoiling, and yet... It's also spoiling him. It's like, well, we're going to, you know, if they'd given you a, two tickets to Borbor and said, you can take whoever you want, that's spoiling you. Where but are taking your parents you along from? is just treating you nicely. Uh, my dad's from here. He grew, he was born and raised in Los Angeles. Right. Oh, he's and, the one. Okay. And my mother is from Mexico City. No kidding. Okay. Yeah. And so did they always know they're only having one child? Um, well, they, they didn't expect to have me, um, uh, they, they, they were told they couldn't have children. So you're a miracle and, uh, child. It's a miracle that See, we're talking this, right now. This is actually changing everything. <laughs> and, no, this does, this changes things. Cause I've heard a lot of your stories uh, and you, 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 you have so many great stories, but all of them are with your parents in a very loving way. Like you don't talk about dysfunction in your act as it were. No, it I like my parents. Yeah, yeah. We don't go for that kind of shit over here at story. <laughs> no, really. but, hey, listen, man, a lot of stand up comics and a lot of storytelling comes from pain well, most, and angst. Most people I know always just tell me stories about their parents and how they fucked them up and everything else. But you seem to come from a really healthy place. You just have these really funny stories about your folks. <clears throat> yeah, I like them. They're, they're good people. That's wonderful. You're, you. I want to ask so you. So, okay, so you did the old twisteroo at the end. You went, you got married to a beautiful woman, and you went on your uh, honeymoon to Paris. Paris. So, did you bring up to the wife? Do you want to go to Bora Bora? I did, of course. Yeah. And okay. What did she say? She hates the sun. She the sun is her enemy. <laughs> that sounds like Hannes. And if yeah. the sun is your enemy, she and I should really uh, should date. It's too late. No, Hannes. it's too late. I know. It's just like she's off the market, Hannes. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying we could run a travel agency <laughs> for pale, bitter people. She's besides, not bitter. Besides Hannes, aren't you engaged still? Yes, I am still engaged. How long is your engagement? Uh, it's about well. Uh, you ever heard of the Hundred Years War? <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> he's on like a five year plan. Is what's what he's the on. hold up? Um, money. Seriously? Yeah. Does it well, cost anything to get married, yeah. uh, Carlos? Does it cost anything? It costs about $25 that's to get what, the... That's exactly what all I right, thought. All right, all right. Good Lord. How much is Sherry paying you people? She to... wanted me to come here. This is what this is about. This is It's an intervention. Do you guys yes. want to know how much a divorce costs? Because I know that. Yeah, tell us. It's uh, $380 to file. Well, that's you a can lot get, cheaper than I thought. You can, thought. Get, you can yeah, get divorced you can totally for 380 bucks if you're not fighting. Isn't that yeah. something? Yeah, but, you know, most of the time you'd be fighting. Otherwise, you wouldn't be getting divorced. That's what I'm talking about. So that's All uh, right. the let way me, Let me talk to Carlos goes. Cockin, would you please? Uh, now that you've I'm talked about getting married six months ago, are kids in the pl- I mean, I know it's a cheesy question, but do you think about children and all that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's totally possible. Oh, that's nice. It would not surprise me. And your wife would be into that? 
she would be into that. She would not you know? name a child Bora Bora, though, would she? No, maybe no. Cora Cora. If, if the if your if the sun is your enemy, I'm then sorry, Hannes. Stop it! I'm trying to just <laughs> stop it. I hate puns more than I hate a sunny beach. <laughs> okay, so your wife and I, you may have children. It's entirely possible. That'd yes. be a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. And your book, Please God, Let It Be Herpes. Yeah. Very, very entertaining. Thank you. And it comes down to how many exactly, how many essays are in there? 12? 18. 18. And how many did you submit to the publisher? Oh, I, I submitted uh, 18 stories, but only four of them made it into the book. Is that right? Tell yeah. us about that process. I submitted uh, 18 uh, essays that were about all sorts of different things, not just about dating. And they they like them, but they said uh, in order to market it more easily, they would they wanted the book to have a theme and to have, to have the stories to be about something within that theme. And that they makes liked, sense. Four of the stories were about dating, and so they said if you could write a whole book that are along the lines of these four stories, then we'd be interested in that. So then I sent them uh, summaries of what those new stories would be, and they gave me the green light. How and, exciting! Uh, I wrote the book. Yeah. Now, is this all via email back and forth? No, I got on the phone with them at a certain point. They wanted to talk to me. Are and, they in and, New York? Yeah. Why are all publishers in New York? They're not all in New York. There's publishers in other places. It but... seems like everybody's is in New well, York. Well, the, the, the no, big was... ones you've heard of started, I'm sure, in New York City. But there's publishers in Chicago. Dallas is a big publishing yeah, I city. Yeah, I see. Don't pigeonhole. You know what's not a big publishing city? Bora Bora. Or El Segundo. Yeah. Who? Who came up with the title, Please God Let It Be Herpes? That was from uh, one of the stories. One of in, the stories. In the book. Because the... sometimes if you think about people reading a book, you know, out in public yeah. or in line at the post office, and then it says herpes on the cover. Yeah, it scares some people and, and it attracts others. It entices others. <laughs> it, it entices, entices others. me. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very yeah. enticed. Some people don't want to be seen with it. And, I can understand that. And was it herpes? It was herpes. Right. Uh, uh, I didn't catch it. I didn't catch anything. All I got out of it was a book deal. I see. Well, th- <laughs> that's a really good thing. Yeah. Well, now, oddly enough, he does have a book growing off the end of his penis. So it's these kind of a people. Weird... <laughs> these people. Oh, yes. I went too far. That's, I'm sorry. You did. Excuse you me, guys. Look behind you. You see behind you? It's yeah. the line. Fine. My future daughter. More could line in Google over here. You crossed it. What about your future daughter? She could be listening. Yeah, you don't I'm, listen. By you the don't time ever you have, have a daughter, inter- the internet will have, uh, electricity <laughs> will have ceased in this country. We're back to coal and none of this will exist. You do not anymore. have to introduce your children to Hannes. I will say that. Uh, all right, let me ask you this. You have won the moth 10 times. Do you have any tips out there for moth performers? Now, er, er, let me back up real quick. The moth, of course, is a storytelling venue. It's in many cities, even in Pittsburgh now, Hannes. Who knew? Yeah, there's only like three stories in Pittsburgh. And, the, like, I love and they the, all involve... I love the Steelers. I hate the Steelers. Yeah, I was going to say, and, they all involve uh, Three Rivers Stadium. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but 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 storytelling is really big right now. The Moth is in many cities. And you've done the Moth here in Los Angeles and in New York. The Moth, what I was going to say is it's really for like the every man. The idea of the Moth is that your your plumber comes forward and he has a good story. Or the landlord has a good story or your banker. Usually, though, it does come down to real performers. Is that right? In Los Angeles, I would say. Yes. Right. Do you have any tips for people that might try this? Go in the second half. Mm. Perform uh, after the intermission. Mm. Except the, you have no choice. Yeah. That and the scores will be significantly higher. Usually. Not always. I have found that as well. I was at a Grand Slam uh, the, once with, uh, recently where the, the first performer. I saw that same won. guy. He was really great. He, he had a story about Lambda, which is the law, a law yeah. uh, practice that helped overturn a lot of the discrimination against gays, right? Mm-hmm. I saw that show. He was first and he won the whole night. So it is possible. I was impressed. There are 10 storytellers in a moth show. 10. So placement is important. Right. But, but if you don't you're doing know who's a story getting involving gay rights in Hollywood, that's kind of like you're doing two stories because you got extra points. Let's <sighs> face facts. Um, most of the, the moths that I won, not all of them, but most of them I went in the second half. Right. Interesting. I always find it's like the sixth or seventh performer who can hit it out of the park. That's but a good by spot. the ninth or the tenth, the judges are like, oh, we already heard our best. And we're wondering if the valet is going to be there when our give, give them our car thing. You know what I mean? They're moved on. They're, they're on. They're, they've moved on. Maybe. Sometimes. It can happen. Where do you like to perform better, New York or Los Angeles? Um, I, I don't have a preference. I like to perform where... Uh, People will where listen. They, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a treat? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Do you ever perform for your parents in the living room? 
Um, no. Do you still? Uh, I never did, and I don't now, but sometimes I'll run things by them uh, over the phone, and usually my mom will say, and, and that's funny? Is that funny? <laughs> And then I'll know, I'll know yeah. I have gold. Then yeah. I'll know. Then you'll know because it's then like, I'm gonna yeah, hit it mom, out of the park. it is funny. Yeah. If yeah. she laughs, then I worry a little bit. All right. And let me ask you this. How about another book? I mean, I know that sounds so cliche. You write one book and everybody wants to know what's next, but yeah. hey man, what's next? It's certainly possible. I'm, I'm, I'm working on other writing projects right now. The book opened uh, quite a few doors. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm, I'm working on other screenplays right now and, and, uh, possible TV project, but. We'll see. What kind of screenplays? Uh, I'm not at liberty to say. Wait, romantic comedy. Hang on. I know. Romantic no, 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 comedy. No. Here's, here's what I'm going to pitch. Okay. We take, yes, please, please God, please. let it be herpes. Right. Much like he's not that into you. Gary Marshall turns it into a multi-star piece of pure, unadulterated crap. Ooh. Where it's like, you know, I, Ashton Kutcher is in it for 10 minutes and Julie Roberts in it for 10 minutes and Chris Rock's in it for 10 minutes. And they, what do you think? Huh? Are you, huh? You're no. saying, you're talking as if the, the Valentine's Day movies and New Year's Eve movies are, are not good. Yeah, that's what you're thinking. That's what I'm thinking. What, like, what about Love Actually? What about that? that no, was no, good. no, that's different. No, no those Gary sorry. Marshall movies are good. Sure, sure they are. <laughs> no, Gary Marshall movies were once, were once awesome. And alas. The book got optioned. My book got optioned by the Fox Broadcasting Network. I wrote a pilot. That is really year. exciting. Good and for do you. We, well, do we know what's they, happening there? Yeah, they said, forget it. We changed our mind. But still, what a treat to be optioned and have, yeah, a, have, a, have an, uh, yeah, so what, an opportunity. What, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they, they bought the rights to it so that they could say, no, do they at some point, do the rights revert back to you? Yes, they're going to. Okay, when does at that some happen? point. Like how long? Uh, I got a few more months on that. Oh, months. Okay. Oh, that's I thought not it bad. might be years or I something. thought it was something no, about the Haley's Comet. It was optioned a, a year. <laughs> it's been almost a year. Right. Hey, you want to play a little shotgun story with you? Sure, let's do that. Music can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Story Worthy. The game show where contestants spin the story worthy wheel of truth and tell a true one minute story on the topic they land. So, everyone, say it with me Spin that wheel! A one minute story about prom. Sure. Uh, one time I got called up uh, late, uh, one late Friday night in June, I, I got a, a voicemail message. And the message was, hey, Carlos, it's Beth Mango. The reason I'm calling is I'd like you to take me to my prom tomorrow night. Thank you. And I, I was conflicted because I was 29 years old. <laughs> and so I didn't, yeah. But I felt bad for her because she obviously couldn't get a date. We didn't know each other very yeah. well. So I, I went with her. I had to wear the dad's tuxedo, which was straight out of 1978. We went to prom dinner at Coco's. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget it. It was memory to last a lifetime. So at Coco's, do they have a salad bar? I don't know. I, I had the fish and chips. Oh, is Did that you right? get the uh, no. pedophilia discount? I was not, yeah. A lot of people think it's creepy. I was doing a good deed. But, but if I you were 29, what, were she you was, sh- she was, Sandusky said. Were you chaperoning as well? I was I was chaperoning her. How she, old was she? She was 18. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I get oh, it. She's hey, legal, man. Now you know she's legal. I didn't realize. <laughs> Whatever. It's <was> fine. <laughs> it doesn't sound she fine. Like it sounds. Her, there was no. Like there was nothing. Pants inappro- at the floor. There was nothing inappropriate. Did you dance? Uh, yeah, we danced. To you shook it all night. You shook. What is it? Shook ACDC. Me all yeah. Night. Long. Yeah. What and was also, the theme? What was the theme of the night? I don't remember what the was theme was. To heaven? But there was a song that they kept playing that had to do with the theme. <laughs> Every like ten minutes they would play You Save the Best for Last by <laughs> Vanessa Williams. <laughs> Yeah. We have to go out there and slow dance to that. Oh my gosh! Well, what did the other uh, dates, other male dates, say to you? Well, of her that's friends? the thing that she didn't have any. No, no, it no. Just, what I mean yeah. is, other people there. Was there? She has girlfriends. There. She had no, no girlfriends. She didn't have any friends. Yeah. We did sat you get at her a, a corsage? I did get her a corsage. A wrist corsage. Yeah, it was a. Ri- I went and stopped to the place, and I got the thing, and they, they were asking me, they were interrogating me, what color is her dress? What's her favorite? And I, was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's I don't know. The, her dad set it up. What's the event that you're taking her to? I said, I'd rather not say. <laughs> Just give me that corsage over there. <laughs> did there, it have a little it, football in it? It was. It was uh, white flowers. That's what I remember. And it was on her wrist. Yeah. And you it put it on, on her. Ri- did you get pictures out in the yard? We got pictures of her house. Or uh-huh. as the police like we... to call it, evidence. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing inappropriate. Carlos, you nothing. make me laugh. Hey, listen, so you're going to be in L.A. for a while. You like L.A.? Yeah. yeah. Good. I just want to be sure. Because you seem like you might just go off to New York at any any minute. I don't think so. Good. 
Do you, I have no further comment. I'm staying yes. in Los Angeles. Where's your wife from? Is she from here? <laughs> She's from California. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, that works out well. well. You're definitely yeah. Do your parents like her? They do. Yeah, I bet. Everybody. And I bet they want a grandkid, don't and, they? Uh, they don't talk to us about that. And mm-hmm. her parents don't, don't either. I think they're, they don't want to put pressure. They're talking to each other. Probably. Like, yeah. all right, you need to put salt Peter in there. Uh, they're like, we'll water. take you to Bora Bora if you get pregnant. It's totally possible. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we can't thank you enough for being on the show again. This is the third time you've done Storyworthy. Yes. This you're, makes yeah, me think that you have worthy stories. You're always a repeater. You. you win the moth ten times. You're on Storyworthy. You've been on Shotgun Storyworthy several yeah. times. Prom Telling seven prom times stories. in a row on Shotgun. You know, by the way, it's very obvious that your next book needs to be about, you know, thank God it's, I hope it's Herpes 2, <laughs> the prom years. <laughs> because you have nothing, you can fill an entire book with prom stories, apparently. All right, you guys, and you can find them at carloscotkin.com. That is convenient. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I would like to say thank you to Jorge Reyes. He is our sound engineer. And I'd also like to thank our storyteller tonight, Carlos Kotkin. And, of course, our producer, Joe Slepsky. And on behalf of you, Hannah Spenny, my dear co-host, my name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story-worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. You're finally at that hot new spot, the one your friends keep raving about, sitting across from your date. It's going... Another round? Really well. And that dish you've been dying to try, oh, it's headed your way. You can smell it, hear it sizzling fresh off that skillet as it comes closer, closer, and served. Go ahead, enjoy. After your phone sneaks a bite first. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express, don't live life without it. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average, and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. Remember how 15 years ago I switched to Progressive? Well, I used all those savings to buy that golf club that swings for you. But now everyone who plays golf is really good because, you know, the club swings for you. In in the future, which is now. So switch to Progressive and save big because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customer surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. And right now, you can save when you shop your faves. Just buy six or more participating sale items and save 50 cents each with your card. Baker's, fresh for everyone.